Everything you see, you touch, you feel, it's imprinted in your mind. And when you use it, and you use it so often, it's prioritized logically, and it comes out automatically when you want to say it. Yeah, so the more you practice, the more you will learn, and the more you will confidence. And I learned something new that there's a disease of Asian people, maybe in general, yeah, I think that's what we face a lot. Yeah. Um, and we have around maybe a 15 or 20 minutes left for this session, so I prepare a few more questions, but I don't want to go with all on my own. Maybe I will can I will bring this event if you have any question to our special guest speaker today. You may raise your hand and I'll, uh, the team will bring you the microphones. So is there anyone has any question related to our topic, public speaking, debate, or any other thing that you would like to ask? It's uh, time to, sh to show your braveness now. <laughs> yes, come, come, public speaking and okay. yes, speak in public. You don't have to come here on the stage, okay? Just ask for your seat. And is there anyone have any question? Please raise your hand. Hi, I think we have beautiful ladies here. Please cover my face. Also, uh, please please introduce yourself and uh, the organizations, and then you can say us uh, one or two questions at the maximum. Oh, tell me one, tell me one. Yeah, uh, good, uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Min Wood and everyone here. My name is Yu Seng. I'm from Department of Media and so I have a question, and yes, this is the last question. And I know you talk a lot about like uh, how to be confident in public speaking, but I want to make sure that uh, like how to like make sense or make a clarification with the topic that we choose to speak in public. So that's it for me, and I need like to make clear in this question. Okay, when I uh, taught my first. Uh, class in medicine at the university. That's the first time I got so, so extremely nervous. And people were just naturally teach their students. Uh, just one hour class, it takes me almost a month to prepare that one lecture. Extreme, that's going extreme. So I review everything, the whole textbook, to understand this one class. But when students ask me, from left and right, up and front, down and so on. I answer them without hesitation. And each question, it raised fearness in me, but it's just the answer there at the tip of my tongue. So what cut down all the fear is the know, the knowledge, the readiness, the preparation. And uh, basically know your topic. And, uh, Nowadays, before I to go to library and carry many books and so on and read old textbook again, now it's just a click of a finger from Google. And you know, those are uh, real or fake, you can tell. So uh, just read from different uh, uh, books, from th uh, different uh, sources, and uh, try to compare them, and at the end, uh, learn how to summarize in your own way and uh, without having to memorize. Because everything you see, you touch, you feel, it's imprinted in your mind. And when you use it, and you use it so often, it's prioritized logically and it comes out automatically when you want to say it. So the best preparation is to know the knowledge, the readiness preparation, and the broad knowledge that come along and then just practice more and um, practice more. And, but for me, uh, this is strange. If I were to do speech, if I were to practice, or if I were to ask someone to ask, if there's someone to ask me to say something what they want, I cannot do a speech. So, and if I have to prepare a topic, I cannot do a speech. So I just come and talk, and I can just talk any topic you want. And I say, but how can you know I don't know, uh, Mr. Longley might know. He know that I read a lot, I, I study a lot. Uh, so I read anything until the, there's nothing to read. I read terraces, I read legal dictionary, I, le I read the largest uh, dictionary on the desk. So, and then I read uh, report, minutes from my staff, and I read the text, I read the email, I read everything to the point that in life, 
it's all the same. So eventually, uh, and you keep reading the news every day. It seems like my TV, 24 hours, CNN, is 24 hours turn, up, turn on. And so you can follow history of anything from, from, from beginning to the end, you know what is going on. If not uh, that, it's BBC, and then so and so. And in America, LA Times, in the Chicago, Chicago Tribune, uh, Tribune there, and you just read it like one LA Times, one New York Times, it's like one month newspaper in Cambodia. That's how so little we have, that's how so abundant material we have. And you read it every day to the point that you feel that everything's in your mind. It becomes natural, the knowledge, innate, yeah. So. Yeah, thank you so much for our special guest speaker, Dr. Mayi, for answering the question. Then, uh, is there any more questions here? Wow, we have two. Okay, so I can finish my job, then we have a questionnaire here. Please introduce yourself and tell us uh, what's your question. So, first of all, uh, good afternoon to Dr. Ming Lee. I've been a big fan of you and watch a lot of your videos. Also, my grandma liked your video a lot, so I just want to express that. So my name is Bong Sarawut. I was a competitor and also the representative of JCI Cambodia to compete in uh, South Korea back in 2019. But that's not about me. It's about my question here. So I think most of the time we see that when you come on stage, you deliver a speech. Sometimes you deliver a short speech. Sometimes it's a long speech. But what we don't see is what's before that, the preparation stage. So I think everyone was curious. How could you actually prepare like the long speech or what, what are the steps that you take when you, let's say, when you, were, when you are invited to speak on something? What would be the thing that you do before, on, before the day of speaking? So that would be my question. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. All my speech usually uh, uh, for the last two, three years, if I have only 30 minutes of speech, I usually don't go. It's too short. Thank you for coming for today. You're fooling student. You cannot have anything done. You cannot share anything in such a short time. So usually if it's two hours, I would go. And that's not enough. And uh, so how do I prepare? I just want to know the topic, that's all. If I know the topic, and then things start to run into my mind. And then usually I check one Google, two Google, and then read through it and remind me everything that I have already learned. So that's all, that's all. And then uh, I have my assistant try to do more research in case I need it for reference. But to his surprise, he tried the whole evening or the whole day doing the speech and I never use it. So. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, uh, my uh, speech writer over there, Mr. Pisset. Is it true or not? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> So I, I never prepare, to be honest, I never prepare my speech, and I never, uh, well basically, I just come and talk. So it seems the topic is already in my mind, I just want to know what it is. And then I just read a little bit. It's a medicine, I have to keep uh, updated in case I give the wrong medication, the wrong sign and symptom, so, because a lot of things are new and come up every year. And uh, it's easy to keep updated. And medicine is very complex. You don't want to give people wrong treatment. Like they can sue you. And I find out that a lot of doctors in Cambodia, they, they misdiagnose, they misdiagnose patients, and they give wrong medication, and not enough quantity. And the efficacy of the medication is not strong. So they end up getting uh, tolerated, and then they are not able to take the same medication again. This is a sad thing happening in Cambodia. So you have to be, as, to be sure yourself, you have to do your own work. In some country, developing country, you cannot rely on professional. You have to be your own professional, do your own research, do your own study, and so on. Otherwise, you're paying a big price. Like some people who are having cancer, when the doctor said, oh, it's okay. No, you cannot take that as an answer. Because by the time you know, it's already spread. So that is a sad thing about developing country when people are not taking you seriously. So therefore, you have to be seriously on your own. I have patients who take the test and they have positive cancer. And it's so sad that it's no one tell them. 
And when I told them that to go see Dr. ASAP, because you do not look right to me, the next one she passed away. And this is it's just a simple test. It costs about $200, but no one do for you. So you have to be on your own in a country that everyone care for themselves. We living in a greedy world, a world of me, 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 and you, you, you. I don't care about you, I care about me and mine and I. So therefore, please take care of yourself. So I can say that I don't have to prepare anything for speech, but let me say this. When I came to Cambodia, I was 35 years old. I work here as, uh, actually, I'm a fellow in uh, Integrated Management of Childhood Illness sent by uh, NGO in Maryland called Partners for Development as a, a doctor, medicine doctor, and do fellow in that field. And then as a fellow, they always give you a position. So my position is public health advisor. So usually when you're an advisor doing fellow program, you end up replacing the person when they expire. But they cannot give me the position and I cannot blame them because at, up until then, I still cannot speak in a meeting. Even in medical school, when I go up speaking, I cry. People so panic on behalf of me. They say, I feel so sorry for Dr. Mamie. He was so nervous. I cannot find way to, to stop my nervousness. Then I find out that it is a disease. You know, even I myself, a doctor, sometimes have to continue you know, searching. So until I find out that it's part of the uh, social phobia, social anxiety disorder. So not every doctor knows everything. So I wasn't given the position as a country director because I'm not able to speak. So it hinders your success. It's a drawback, you know, it's a drawback. It stops you from moving forward. So therefore, if you have people like that, help them, seek treatment. It is not about that you are weak, it's not about that you're not smart, it's not about that you are not professional, you don't know this, that, no. It is mental illness that you have to cure or treat them. And it is treatable, just a small piece of medication. It helps you a lot. So public speaking is one of the way of destroying you from moving forward, going up the ladders. So therefore, please, okay? Uh, that's what I'm, I'm just want to help you with that. So I'm seeing patients from 3.30 to 5 and Saturday, Sunday uh, appointment basis and can telegram me free of charge and never charge. We're seeing uh, half a million patients so far through our NGO, I myself, uh, seeing the patient. So just telegram and then uh, uh, text me and uh, we make an appointment free of charge, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.